later, and that's always a song he wanted to play with me. I don't know if you all remember that, but <laughs> that good old memory that he was just sitting right there and just drum on that car. Play out at the cross, so we sang that quite a bit. several events coming up and uh, just be aware of what's going on and uh, be part of the yard sale bag sale and and then the ladies fellowship the regional meeting and the wow conference things to give us a chance to be about fellowship and reaching out to others doing some ministry be part of those things don't just come and sit in the church come and be part of the
on this prayer request, I would ask that you have yourself a bulletin. Keep up with that this week. We've had several uh, families that were touched by death this week in our church and desire your prayers. And uh, some of them are here tonight. Carrie's here. Her sister passed away this week. Joyce and Bobby are here. Joyce's sister passed away. Just remember them. Just remember the families. Uh, Randy's father has passed away this week. <clears throat> and they want us to make sure everybody knows the announcements. Uh, the visitation is Tuesday, 11 to 2. And then 2 o'clock is the funeral and burial at Boeing Cemetery. And that will be at the Duval and Moore Funeral Home in Olive Hill. So everybody knows how to get to Olive Hill and desires to go. And uh, just to spend the time with the family. So that would be greatly appreciated. Is there any other prayer requests this evening?
and the same. Till I got in church this morning, I worked on them all week. And Karen saying about peace. And then Brother Chad brought the message. And it may not have mentioned peace particularly in it, but it was about having peace with Christ. So we've had several storms in our church family, but we know who can give us peace to go through these storms. And I pray each and every one of you in here this evening know this peace.
I'd be in bed at the best place to sleep. <laughs> now, I'm not a fan because it's needy. She's in my face. Everything else. You know, she climbs up and she just, you know, and she'll go to the edge of the bed and she'll come back and back and forth all night, you know. And you can't close the door. She'll be at the door whining all night because she, she can't hear and she wants to be with people. Well, I had a bad night with Dad one, one night. I was up and down. And of course, he turned over and went right back to sleep after I checked on him and everything. I'm laying there and all of a sudden turned in. And that silly cat just climbs up by me. It didn't ask for anything. It just laid there and just purred. I'm thinking about this cat. My aggravation with it. And the Lord said, this cat is just content. How about you? This cat is so peaceful. Just purr. I mean, it just flopped down the lane.
Lord, whatever it might be, God, you'll meet that need tonight. So, Lord, you minister to us. You lead us and guide us all of your ways. And help us to just be hid behind the cross. Help us to live and do by your grace tonight. Father, as we look to you this evening, we ask these things in Jesus' name. And amen. You may be seated tonight. <clears throat> I'm going to ask you to turn tonight to John chapter 10. After I mentioned Noah, I believe we still have a John Deere bag that was made and given to him to keep his toys in. And he sat with you and Tom and uh, just appreciate ones who take our kids and love on them and uh, treat them as their own. I'm thankful for that tonight. God's just good, isn't he? He's good all the time. And I'm glad to know the, the peace speaker. And uh, that he can speak into our storms. He can speak into our situations. He can speak into our circumstances tonight. And he can change them. The winds and waves still have to obey his voice, right? But a lot of times he just speaks right into our heart. And he calms us, calms the storm in us. And I'm thankful for that tonight, just that he, he lets us know I'm always there. And uh, I'm thankful and appreciate the Lord tonight. John chapter 10 is a familiar passage of Scripture. And I just want to read a few verses beginning in verse 6 tonight. And uh, I, I, uh, sometimes I look at what the Lord gives and how he leads into a sermon and uh, filling in and pulpit supply and so forth. And, Sometimes you think, Lord, is that really the right way? And these two sermons today, like I said this morning, are almost kind of a list. There was uh, 14 items that were on there this morning that we tried to walk through as quickly as we could this morning. And it wasn't an exhaustive list, but just things that the Lord brought to mind. Uh, tonight is, is another list. I probably shouldn't have told you there was 14 on that one. You might be thinking, Lord Jesus, how many's on there tonight? But uh, you'll be home by 10 and have dessert and get to bed and it's still at a good time. But I'm just kidding. But, you know, I think sometimes it's good just that the Lord just looks at us and just checks us and challenges us and helps us in, in any way that he knows we might need it tonight. But I, I'm glad he's a... a ever-present help in a time of trouble. And I'm glad we can depend on Him in all things tonight. He never said this life would be easy. Uh, I, I, I teach as a center with the Christian school, and we had revival uh, last week, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Started at 1245. They went to about 230. And after the singing and preaching, and kids would go pray, they'd let some of the kids give their testimony. And uh, some of the ones that volunteered to, to share their testimony uh, was heartbreaking to hear what some of them have come through uh, already. And, and they're freshmen and sophomores in, in the high school and in the school and, and things they've gone through. And, uh, but I'm, I'm glad they're finding and hope they're finding and learning that the Lord is real. And the Lord is near and, and he's helpful to them. And I'm glad he's there for you and I tonight. Uh, John chapter 10, we know, is uh, the, the parable of Christ as the good shepherd. Uh, he shares that with him. Verse 6 of John chapter 10 says, This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. Aren't you glad there's just one way tonight? All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I'm glad tonight that there is an abundant life that we have in Christ. And that even in the trials, even in the hardest of circumstances and situations, that we can find God in the midst of it. And I'm glad he 
proves himself time and, and time again. And he, he teaches us how to go deeper. He teaches us how to live by faith. And as we sang, beginning to serve us, learning to lean upon him. And I, I believe that's, that's the abundant life that, that ministers to our spirit and fills us with his joy and his peace, even when the storms are raging all around. The other day, just that word thief popped up. And it kind of stirred this thought tonight, brought me to this passage of scripture and thinking about the thief. And we think about a thief tonight, and just a simple definition is one that steals, especially stealthily or secretly. That they never come and leave a note on the door saying, Hey, I, I'm going to come back in a couple of days at such, such time. And, this is the way I'm entering in. They don't announce what they plan to do or when they plan to show up. And, and they just, we come home or whatnot and we find the evidence that the thief has been there. And uh, so they, they steal, that's their, their main desire, but they do it secretly. And in thinking about this thought tonight that the Lord has led us to this evening is, is just the simple question tonight of, who or what is the thief in our life? Possibly. And the Lord says we can have an abundant life. That he has come that they might have life and might have it more abundantly. If we look at that word abundantly, it's life in its abounding fullness of joy and strength for spirit, soul, and body. In the Greek form, that word abundance means super abundant, beyond just the fullness of something, that it's an overflow, like it's more than what we could imagine. If we think about Ephesians chapter 3, Paul in his prayer there for the church, he said, Now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask to think according to that power, that work it in us. And uh, I'm glad tonight that all that we have tonight as a Christian is because of Him. Amen. It's through Him. It's, it's by Him. It's because of Him tonight. And I, and I believe tonight, no matter uh, how long we've been on the way, we, we reference this scripture. We, it connects it to John chapter 9. And speaking of the religious rulers and those that have come before Jesus, He compares them as thieves and robbers and what they try to teach and, and share and, and so forth. But, but isn't it good to know that there is one way tonight, not just one way to heaven, but this life as a Christian, living for Christ and living with Christ in us, it's the best life there is to live. It's truly the only life that is worth living tonight. It's not worth being a part-timer. It's not worth trying to be a lukewarm Christian, and, but it's just worth being a Christian tonight. It's worth knowing that uh, we have the assurance of salvation. It's knowing, as Sarah sang tonight, knowing the peace speaker. And knowing him doesn't mean the storms never come. It doesn't mean the winds and waves don't beat upon the house and beat upon the, the vessel and upon us that is sailing into eternity. But it's knowing that we know him who is right in the middle of the storms with us. I think tonight as she sang that and thinking through it tonight, and, you know, Jesus came walking on the water to his disciples in the fourth watch of the night. As the storm was raging, he came walking to them. In another passage we find that he was asleep on the higher part of the boat and the storms were raging and they awoke him and they said, Master, do you not care that we perish? To them it wasn't a possibility of perishing. To them it almost seemed like this is an absolute. We're going to perish and you are asleep. You don't seem to care. Jesus, we know, would awaken and he would call the winds and the waves as they have to obey his voice. And, and I think of those things and, and we learn through life that, that he's just always present. He is for his children. He's for that relationship with his children. He's for filling us with his, his peace and his joy and his love and his goodness so that it flows out of us even in the hardest of times so that other people can see him. 
and they're drawn to him. So I thought about this verse and kind of praying on what to do with it and God began to just lead this way and we think about the thief tonight and, and we think that their tactic is to show up when we're not at home or when we're not awake and, and they're sneaky as we said already and they're really uncaring. They don't care that when we come home and they've been there and taken what isn't theirs and they're gone, they don't care what that does to us when we walk in. They don't care that it, it, when you come home, and I haven't had it in my home, and I pray it never does, but I know one time my car was broken into when I was in college, and I remember getting in it and realizing that someone else had been in there. I'd gone through my stuff, taking stuff, and, and it just left an eerie feeling. And if I felt that in my vehicle, I can't imagine what that would feel like to come home to my house, we come home and find that someone else has been there. We come home today and um, yesterday and then again today and we see tire tracks up through the grass past the house, around to the barn and maybe to the field on the other side. We just kind of look at each other. Who's coming to the house when we're not here and driving through the yard? And it just creates a, uh, something within us that begins to create an unsettledness. But the thief doesn't care what that does to you and I. The thief only wants what they want. And when we think about the thief tonight, we think about the enemy, of course, Satan himself. And he doesn't care what he does to you and I. He doesn't care no matter how it leaves us after he attacks and after he does what his job is, what his heart's desire is. But I, I thought tonight, beyond Satan, beyond the enemy of our soul, what are some possible thieves and robbers tonight to come? And I, I, of course, we always think about our faith. We think about our peace. And I, I, the tonight just weighing on my mind is, is what about our joy? Nehemiah says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. John says, Jesus said that I, I want you to have my joy. I want my joy to remain in you so that you remain of his joy. There's something about the joy of the Lord tonight, isn't there? Something about it that it's not happiness, it's not circumstances, it's not situations, it's just that inner confidence of knowing that he is ever present. That he's got not just my back PB, but he's got the sides, the top, the bottom, and the front. He's got us in the palm of his hand. But that thief tonight, Whatever shape it takes, whatever form it takes, it comes for the purpose of stealing. To steal our joy. To steal our peace. To steal our love. To steal our faith. And then again, to go back to it, he wants our joy. These things will take our joy tonight. Some of these first four, and these are no exhaustive, it's not an exhaustive order, they're not in any particular order tonight, but just as they came to mind, and real quickly tonight, Worry, doubt, fear, and unbelief. The first four that are kind of clustered together, that we hear about so often and battle with so often, that can steal our joy tonight. That, that worry is just like being in a rocking chair and we're, we're moving, but we're not getting anywhere. We know the night that worry, being anxious, does us no good, but yet we still battle with it tonight. Doubt is another one. Fear paralyzes tonight. And it can motivate us, it can move us tonight, but I, I think many times it paralyzes us. Unbelief tonight hinders the work of God in our lives. I believe the end of Matthew 13, maybe that last verse says that Jesus did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Unbelief stopped the children of Israel, the first generation, from entering in to the promised land. Unbelief tonight, we've got to understand that, that these thieves, these robbers tonight, they're effective. They meet their goal. They, they're powerful in how they rob us of joy and peace and love and, and faith tonight. But worry, doubt, fear, and unbelief. Let's talk about time. Time tonight, and Janelle and I were talking about this, I think today, on the way home. And, and her statement was that sometimes for those that are unstaved or we think about things, we think we got all the time in the world. 
and we procrastinate. We put it off. High school, I was horrible. The Lord has helped me throughout my adult life to do better in that area of procrastination. But, but we think we got too much time. The other side of that is, is not understanding that there's too little time and it leads us to poor prioritizing. I put this first ahead of this and this isn't that important. This is more important, but I feel like this has to be done right here, right now, and we sacrifice and miss some other things. So time, and such a blessing that it is, but it goes by quickly, the scripture says it, it is as a vapor, but yet time can be a thief. It can be a robber tonight. The past, capturing our attention and our thoughts, keeping us from the present. We mentioned that a little bit this morning and, and being caught in the past. And I, I'll be honest with you, I remember one time many, many years ago sitting in a church in, in West Point, Kentucky, and it seemed like all the testimonies were all about how services used to be. Don't get me wrong, I love hearing how God moved in the past. I loved hearing, loved hearing how this one got blessed, and God answered this prayer, this and that. But I remember there that morning and the way things were being said. And I remember within me, I believe I testified that morning, I just about led on my heart to say, you know, I'm thankful for all those things, but I'm glad that God is a present God, that He's not changed, that what He did yesterday, He can still do today. Believe us tonight, like I said, we serve a great, big God. And we can't forget that. And, and sometimes even as Christians and as churches, we can get busy looking back. That was said in, in the right way this morning in Sunday school. That, and I just forgot it, but it's rather to be get historical with God than hysterical with God. Is that right? My memory is not like my hair in that moment. I got better. But it's good to look back and as David did. He said, look, God delivered me against the paw of the bear and the mouth of the lion. And if he did those things, he'll deliver me shortly and help me against this uncircumcised Philistine. And, and he looked back in a positive way to encourage him in the present. But sometimes we look back thinking what happened then is recorded in the news, but nothing can happen now. If Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, past, present, and future, then why do we limit him by saying what is done has already been done and can't, nothing more can be done? Pride, not willing to humble or stoop low in the sense of asking or acknowledging that we need help. Not willing to humble ourselves and say, you know what, I, I don't have the answer. I don't know how to handle this. I don't know how to solve this. I don't know what to do with this. I'm not sure what's going on. And being able to confess and acknowledge and know that that's okay. Know that that doesn't hinder our faith. But in fact, I believe it helps our faith because it gets that thief out of the way. It acknowledges that I don't have all the answers and I don't have to. I just need to know the one who does. And be able to humble myself and say, Lord, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Show me the way. But pride keeps us. Now, and I think you understand tonight. I'm not meaning an arrogance tonight. Can't go that far. But just the unwillingness to humble unwillingness to stoop low and say, oh God, I need you. Oh God, I'm a needy person. And let him help us. Problems. Consuming our thoughts. Trying to figure out how to solve them and fix them on our own. Problems can be there day and night when we go to sleep first thing when we wake up in the morning screaming at us. Goliath was a problem that hindered the children of Israel kept them on the hillside until David went down into the valley. Problems tonight can become a giant of a thief that robs us and hinders us and steals our joy and steals our progress. They can keep us while we're on the hillside, afraid to face it and confront it. People, I'll be careful with this one. 
We all see one fellow many, many years ago when he did something like this, he just called them button pushers. Anybody have any button pushers in their arm? Don't point to anybody. But people, we're all in need. We know there's level ground at the cross. Some, they don't want help. They don't want to make progress. They just want to cry. Just want to complain. People can steal our joy. People, God, Satan rather, people can be used as a thief and as a robber. Negativity, pessimism can be a thief and a robber. Busyness, there's an old story that talks about Satan's tool, a tool of busyness. Let's keep them too busy so they can't read. Keep them too busy so they're too tired to pray. Keep them too busy to come to church, too busy to think about the Lord. Pastor Adrian Rogers had a statement that said, if Satan can't make you bad, he will make you busy. And I believe sometimes we can even get busy doing the Lord's work to where we lose the intent of why we're doing it and being intentional with it. Our thought life. Scripture tells us to think on things that are pure, holy, just. And there's a battle that rages in our minds and in our thought lives that we, we fight with daily. And sometimes, I'm honest with you, sometimes it's like, Lord, I'm, I'm exhausted from fighting this mental battle. But there's something about the thought life tonight that can steal our joy and rob us of that peace. Insecurities that dominate us and we can't shake and turn over the Lord. Unconfessed sin, unforgiveness, bitterness, gossip, envy, strife, jealousy, on and on in that cluster of things. Pretending. I can't just lost his name, but this is my memory. He is like my hair still. It's out of Columbus. He's an attorney. David Gibbs is his name. I love listening to him. But he has a message that Judas is one of the greatest actors that ever lived. That he spent three years, three and a half years walking with Jesus from the center for the miracles and the teachings and the preachings. But yet his heart was elsewhere. And, and I've heard testimony of Christians who have been living for the Lord, going to church and Finally, I know one fellow in particular was Easter, and the servant was all Judas, and he ended up going to the altar that morning. He'd been in church all of his adult life, taking his kids, and he felt compelled to go to the altar that morning. He just was convicted over the fact that he was a Judas, realizing he had never come to a place of his own personal salvation. But yet going through the motions and living that life and, and maybe it ties in with that pride factor that, that we get to the place where we just kind of think it till we make it. I believe that's one of the biggest thieves and robbers there is tonight. Because the joy the Lord gives is real, isn't it? I mean, it's fulfilling, it's satisfying, it's there with us, and, and it's real tonight. And, and to fake that, to pretend that, that we're something we're not, or whatever it might be, but, but these are just thieves and robbers tonight, and we could go on and on this evening. All of these thieves tonight rob us of the abundant life that Jesus said, yes, the thief is present. They've come before me. But I have come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. Who is that? That's the sheep in the Lord's pasture. That's the ones who choose to follow the Lord and obey His voice rather than any other voice who is identified as, if it's not the Lord, then any other voice is a thief and a robber tonight. So I ask you this evening, who or what is your thief? Who or what is my thief? What robber is coming into your house, this house, the temple in which the Lord dwells, that we've been bought with a price, coming in secretly, stealthily? And we don't realize it too. We're brought to a place to realize my joy is missing. My peace is missing. Where's, where's my power? Where's the assurance of salvation? 
All in all, we can go to the storms of life. They come and they beat against us. They rage and they roar. The pepper doesn't care to come tonight with a song. As I said, we, we could go on and on. The Lord never said that this life would be easy. He said we could make it. Because he'll go through it with us. I looked over as we were singing one of the songs tonight as we and read in Hebrews 12. The scriptures there in Hebrews 12 says that the Lord endured the cross, despising the shame, and the joy, for the joy that was set before him. He did those things. It was a joy for him to die on the cross for you and I. Think about that. His body stripped, beaten beyond recognition. No beauty or comeliness in his face to look upon. And yet for him, it was a joy to endure the cross, despise the spit upon, ridiculed, mocked for our sake. And it was a joy for him. I believe the Lord wants us to have a joy in living for him that we should have a joy in dying for Him, dying out to ourselves and dying for Him so that we can then have the abundant joy in living for Him, casting all our cares upon Him because He cares for you and I, seeking that peace that passes all understanding and is able to keep our hearts and our minds. I'm glad tonight there's joy, aren't you? There's thieves out there. And there's thieves in here. I'm not talking about you as people. I'm talking about the presence of those things that we mentioned tonight. Come right into the sanctuary. Because sometimes, knowingly or unknowingly, we carry them in with us. Remember, they're secret. They're stealth. I see how they work and what they do. Stealth mode, very quiet, flying under the radar. Until all of a sudden we realize one day something's missing. Something's missing. I don't know your need tonight. I don't know your heart tonight. I know I'm trying to share the best of my abilities. The Lord would give us help tonight. And if there's anything missing tonight, if there's the evidence that a thief has been present, let's come get back what the enemy's taken. If we need peace, the Lord will return it. If we need joy, we need whatever it might be tonight, the Lord will restore it tonight. And I'm going to ask you to stay in this evening. He has come that you and I, as His human sheep, might have life and have it more abundantly. In super abundance, in overflow, if you will. He looked at Paul, we saw him three times for that form to be removed. The Lord said, all my grace is sufficient for thee. It's enough and more than enough. Paul no longer prayed about that. He turned that over. He received what the Lord gave him and he went on doing the work of the Lord. Friend, you and I tonight, we can go on. In spite of the pain, in spite of the thorn, and I do not make light of whatever the thorn may be tonight. But I do emphasize the value and the greatness of God's grace that enables us to keep going. Whatever your need might be tonight, as she plays a verse of the chorus, would you come, let's pray, let's kick the thief out, and let's get whatever he's taken restored tonight.
bow your heads with me tonight. Nobody's looking on. It's myself and the Lord. I've been asking the kids this in all my classes lately. Is there anybody tonight? I won't call you out. I won't identify you. I just want to raise your hand. Brother Chad, I need prayer. Just by an upraised hand, you just signify tonight. I need prayer. As we look over the sanctuary, see that hand. Thank you. Anyone else tonight? That hand. Thank you. That hand. Thank you. That hand. Thank you. That one. Thank you. I need prayer. I thought as we were closing tonight of how David, the enemy came, the thief came, raided Ziklag and burned the camp, took the women and children, the wives of David and his 600 men. So discouraged and grieved and distraught and broken, the men thought of stoning David. And the scripture says that David called for the ephod and, and, and the stones of blessing and cursing, and he encouraged himself in the Lord. And after he was encouraged, he, he asked the Lord, Shall I pursue and shall I overtake? In other words, do I have permission from you to go into the enemy's camp and take back what the thief has stolen? And God said, Pursue, and thou shalt surely overtake. I don't know your heart to mine. I know many hands, several hands were raised tonight, but if the enemy has raided the camp and he's stolen, remember the thief always takes what isn't theirs. Your joy, your peace, your love, that's not for the enemy to take. God gives us that. God gives us that peace. He gives us his presence and power. When the enemy, the thief, comes to take what isn't his. But maybe tonight is a night to get encourage yourself in the Lord and ask him, do we go and overtake? David went, his men pursued. 200 retired and stayed by the, by the work of the sword. And David and the others went on and they captured my all that was there that the enemy had stolen and brought it back. Friend, tonight, I pray maybe we just get mad at the thief. Get mad at the one thing that's broken in secretly and taken whatever it's taken that so much so we want it back. We want it back. Father, I thank you for the hands that were raised tonight. I thank you for the individuals who said, I need prayer. And I know tonight you acknowledge and recognize those hands. But more so, you recognize the individual, the son, the daughter of yours that is associated with that hand that was raised. So, Lord, I'm trusting and believing tonight in agreement with them that you saw it and you will minister unto them whatever that need is tonight. You are our shelter. You are our strength and our, our, our high tower, the shield and the buckler that we run into and hide and find our refuge this evening. Father, I pray tonight that Lord will set up a watch. We won't let the thieves in. We won't let the robbers in. Lord, we'll make it difficult by setting a watch and setting a guard. But Lord, should they sneak in anyway, Father, we'll fight to get back what the enemy's taken. We'll fight to get our joy, our peace, and our passion of serving and loving you, Lord, with all of our heart, soul, mind, strength, and body. Thank you for the privilege of being here today and being in worship with brothers and sisters here at the Maysville 3 CU. Please continue to bless them. Bless their outreaches. Bless their ministries and jam and Sunday school and all that they're doing for the glory of God to see the kingdom of God in March. Father, we love you tonight. We thank you for loving us. We ask it all in Jesus' name and amen. Amen. God bless you. Shake hands one with another.